I had this uh, revelation a short time ago. I had applied for a job at Burlington Coat Factory. And after I applied for a job, I was given all kinds of accounts, emails talking about how I had to acknowledge and go on the online and answer all these questions. And some of them were very questionable. I didn't understand why they were sending it to me. And then I was supposed to do some sort of training on site. They never got back to me to set the training up. They kept delaying. It was like they were playing a game, like they were taunting me. And at some point, I had to leave the state. But they didn't close the accounts they opened. Six months later, I got an email telling me they were closing the accounts one by one. And when they did that, there was this huge transmission of information. I did not know at the time that Burlington Coat Factory was owned by Bain Capital. And I did not know at the time who was involved with Bain Capital. And I did not know at the time that somebody with political ambitions and a relationship with Bain Capital had identified a group of people I worked with as, I don't know, being potential future assets. And I did not know the nuances of what was considered to be appropriate testing by people of certain spiritual inclinations. And I did not know until then that Bain Capital had sizable investments in biomed companies, including biomed companies that for whatever reason justified using fetal tissue in its R&D, and I did not know then that Bain Capital had every intention of trying to make strategic acquisitions of a bankrupted nuclear power plant and affiliates in the United States, and that as it did this, there was this undertone of manipulation of my past relationships with people that were associated with a different religious tendency than the people I primarily encounter in the course of this account reassignment. Now, I know there are people who believe that their faith gives them the cover to torment and chastise and punish other people that they've determined to be morally failing. And within different tendencies, there is contestation about what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. But the thing is, is that at some point, it has to be acknowledged that your spiritual admonishment was misplaced. It doesn't matter if you're the Ku Klux Klan. It doesn't matter if you're a Mormon elder. It doesn't matter if you're a Kabbalist. It really doesn't. See, I said this once to somebody who thought they were spiritually invested with the right to judge. I said, if you need to go through hell, who do you expect to go through it with? My father was a devil dog. Do you know what a devil dog is? How dare you look at me and what I've done with my life and make an assumption based on the way my father looks or what he didn't do or say in performance of some ritual you never even informed him of in the beginning that you were going to use me as your tax write-off. You failed. Now what are you going to do? You've delved way, way, way too far into the darkest realms. Whatever moral vindication you thought you had in so doing has dissipated. And it seems it doesn't really matter on one level whether you associate yourself with a very, very ancient legacy or if you're a new convert. Over and over again, these illegal and unconstitutional spiritual tests 
end up failing. I cannot perform an ablution or an act of contrition that is not justified. If I have not committed a sin, I cannot launder somebody else's sin. And if you won't be reasonable and understand that you overstepped your own moral authority and compromised the safety of your own people in so doing, what do you expect from me? There's a reason there's a separation between church and state. There's a reason I ask permission before I even enter, much less try to join you in ritual. What right do you have to chase me down from state to state and city to city and force me over and over and over again to admit that I've engaged in a satanic act I never did. And when I refuse to relent and engage that satanic act, you just cast me out anyway so you can keep chasing me. If you say you do not believe in something, what right do you have to investiture it as part of your business operations and then try to use it to punish somebody else? You are investing in an economy of sin. And if you can't get charity to launder it, well, what are you going to do? I think that's where we are, isn't it?